Hello, Al Pals. It is Saturday Night Rewatch time, and I am looking at the scariest face I've seen since, <laughs> well, the last time me and him streamed. <laughs> seems he has, seems you have your uh, villainous garb on. I do. Uh, I figured uh, I would, uh, I would dress, I would dress for the role today. Dress appropriately. Yeah, it's like uh like the uh, thumbnail said, I, I never realized just how much you kind of resembled being the merciless. <laughs> I thought that too. So I already had this in preparation. Uh, you, 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 already, said that. you already had it in mind. I did. Uh, well, I want to thank uh, everyone who, who is uh, so far. We've got Daniel Heron and uh, Mr. Matchstick, Owen Lister, Juan Cholo. Um, how you guys doing? Dark Stranger. Uh, KC Scott is in the house. Um, we've got, uh oh, got a, um, seeing an error on YouTube. Is YouTube coming in for everybody? Or is it just me? I'm, I'm seeing it just fine. Are you hearing me okay? okay. I'm hearing you okay. okay. Now I'm talking, now I'm talking about the YouTube channel. Uh, looks like it's okay to me. Usual lag that I expect, but other than that, it's okay. Uh, okay, maybe I, I just was getting an error message, and I just wanted to make sure that. Uh, well, you saw when you went into Streamyard, right, right? They had the little message from Streamyard saying that everybody's experiencing lag and so forth. So don't be surprised. Yeah, there's yeah, there's weird stuff going on in the universe because with everybody stuck at home and everybody streaming, then everybody is, you know, the bandwidth is getting chewed up a lot more than usual, which is understandable. And it's just something we have to kind of deal with. Um, I did say, I did say hi to, uh, I just want to make sure I get, get everybody here. Uh, Melissa Harris in the house. I uh, got Steven Cruz. How you doing? Uh, Sir Torin game. And uh, that's, Everybody that I that I see in the chat now. What I'm going to do is I'm going off YouTube. I'm not, uh, uh, so I'm not all you know. That's using okay. My bandwidth. I can, oh, and I can watch the uh, I can watch the comments for you. There. Well, I've got. Well, see, I can. I've got. There's the there's the lovely not it. <laughs> I just that's yeah, what I, yeah. I just thought that would be funny. <laughs> How you doing, Netter? Uh, I, just sounds I'm funny to say okay. Netter. I just like I like the net. I'm used to just saying the net. But uh, that's fine. yeah. Um, tonight, of course, as I have been heavily um, promoting all week on on, on the Twitter, uh, uh, we are watching the 1980 cult classic, wonderful version. Of the the pulp hero, Flash Gordon. Uh, now the reason, reason, several reasons I wanted to do this film. I I was thinking we were going to do this film eventually, anyway, because it's just simply awesome. And uh, I've I've loved this film since 1980. I remember seeing it when I was like a what a freshman in high school or something. Maybe a maybe a sophomore. I'm trying to remember exactly. Well, when, uh, I, I think yeah, I think it was a sophomore. I was class of eighty nine, so yeah. eight, eighty seven, eighty six. So I was still in grade school. Yeah, I was I was class of eighty three. So this came out a couple, you know, a couple years before before yeah. I got out of school. It was in December, and so this December is actually its fortieth anniversary. Uh, and I can't and and. Oh, I know, and I'd like, and they would like to do. They usually take the whole year for celebration, so it's the 40th anniversary celebration that Big Al uh, presents is uh, participating in. But of course, the the main reason we're doing it tonight is is that a few weeks ago, on um, in fact, uh, almost three weeks ago, on March 8th, uh, the world lost Max von Sydow, who yeah. is. Ming the Merciless uh, yeah. and, and Flash Gordon. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, the man was in everything. I mean, he's one of those actors that you, until, you go, until you go into his IMDb and really look at what he's done, 
you're really it's really a shock to see how much he's actually done i mean and just just in the genre just in the sci-fi fantasy genre he's in game of thrones he was in star wars force awakens he was in the simpsons he uh he was in a robin it was a robin hood he was in the wolf the remake of the wolfman uh he did the he was vigo in the ghostbusters video game uh mm. he was in minority report he was uh what dreams may come i think that was a, that was weird i am yes i am going down his uh his imd imdb report no you're uh, not supposed to tell anyone that you're supposed to make everybody know. think you know it all well i want to give i want to give it its due diligence and you know i i don't want to miss out on something that uh you know might have done but uh um like I said, Ghostbusters 2, he was the voice of Vigo. So so a lot of people don't realize that, but yes, that was Max von Sydow. Um, he, uh, he was in Dune. He played Dr. Kynes in Dune. Uh, Dreamscape. And I'm, I, I'm literally just naming the, the genre stuff. I'm skipping over all the other weird stuff. Conan the Barbarian is King Osric. He was in the Ice Pirates uncredited i don't know what he was in the ice pirates but that's another one of those weird ones we're gonna have to do one day uh exorcist 2 eh, <laughs> may not be, may not have been the best exorcist movie to do but of course he was in it because he was in the first one uh so he he played father Marin in the in the exorcist and it just it goes on and on and on such a great actor um and if you really want to see something special Go back to a uh, film from 1957, The Seventh Seal. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about it. It's just uh, a really great role. Um, <laughs> Stephen Cruz saying he did porn in the 70s. It was pretty rad. Well, I don't know about that. So if he did, good on him. Um, I bet the Klingons, <laughs> Adrian Bieber saying, I bet the Klingons would hate Ming the Merciless. Oh, I don't I don't know. They, they might he, like them. They might like him. I was gonna say, he, he, if he was the emperor of the Klingon Empire, I'd say, you know, that would be fine. He had the right demeanor for it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh but yeah, I mean, like I said, but of course the most iconic role to me was being the merciless in Flash Gordon. Um a lot of a lot of older people might a lot of horror fans would say Father Marin from The Exorcist, which I mean you could argue, I mean just as iconic of a role, but just not as not as up there in my my book, but uh, uh, but definitely up there. But uh, like I like I said, uh, Flash Gordon just just ba basically someone took crayons, melted them down. On it, just threw them all over celluloid. I just the colors in the in this film are fantastic, and they were meant to be that way. That's a lot of people look at it. And they go, "Well, that looks kind of cheesy." It was meant to look that way. It wanted to invoke those Sunday comics from the '30s and '40s and all that other stuff, and I, and I think it really did it justice. Um, uh, and. You know, I've I've always been always been a fan of the of the the retro sci-fi guys, uh, Buck Rogers and Flash, um, and those guys. And uh, sadly, uh, Flash Gordon film was uh, in the in the in the um, realm of being made, but uh, because because of Disney and buying things, it it got it got swiped out. So uh, yeah. that. That's there. So, Troy, so Troy, your outfit, where, where is that inspired from? Well, I, I looked at the, the pictures online of, uh, of Ming the Merciless, and I'm like, I got a red cape. This is actually a red cape that I use for uh, a Doctor Strange cosplay. Oh, nice. That and would work. Yeah, that would work. And the background is actually the, the background that you see when Ming first arrives and, and he uh, is walking down that hallway. This is that hallway. How did you, how, how do you do that? You got like a blue screen thing happening or I, uh, I just built, this, 
Yeah, I just built this uh, green screen behind me, and the uh, the picture I literally took from a capture from the the, the film. Mm -hmm. How you don't have to tell me how that works? I I have no idea how that works. Yeah. So that sounds pretty pretty awesome to me having a having a, having a green screen or a blue was it blue or green? Green. Yep. It's green. Yeah, because they always used to say blue screen, and now it's green. Everything is green, so I guess it's just. The reason was is because, and you can do it either way. It's just that if you have blue eyes or if you have a blue shirt or whatever, that's more common. So right. it's you know, and so like green. even even the blue on my uh, on the side of my uh, yeah that yeah I would, can see that would I can, clash. I can see them. I can see them doing something weird. <laughs> the little yeah, light on the side there, kind of pulsing, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Nanette, have you seen Flash Gordon before? I hope. It's been a really, really long time. A really long time. Yeah. This is this is a film I watch fairly off, fairly uh, fairly often. Uh, I catch it when it's on. Um, usually lately on comic on uh, comet television. Uh, and before that, you know, it's 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 on. I see. Oh my God, you're doing the yes. professor thing. Yes, I am. You can oh, see you're it. It's not Dr. Dr. Pib. <laughs> or Dr. He, he, Actually, it's Dr. He, Pepper. He is supposed to be out there in the ether, possibly watching us. So, so you know, knowing, knowing, <laughs> knowing that his drink of choice is, uh, has been invoked on the show might, might bring him out of the woodwork. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I invited him. I invited Fan Man. Um, but uh, their Saturday nights get a little crazy, I think. You know, having yeah. family and all, and with you two, you two are family, so you do this That's together. True. That's true. So, so, um, so yeah, we're eleven minutes in. Yeah, let's 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 start thinking about getting getting this started. Um, of course, uh, just real quick, everybody notices my avatar tonight is of the wa wonderful Brian Blessed yep. as um, as Prince Voltan, uh, my favorite character from the film, uh, and uh, you do kind of look alike. Tonight. I yeah I go for the big I go for the big guys with beards that's yeah. that's that's kind of the type I I kind of I kind of go for uh, crispy is asking about the movie Ted oh yes I have seen Ted and it is a great a great thing Ted and Ted two as well there is actually a gift set out there where you could get Ted Ted two and Flash Gordon it is like the ultimate savior it is like the ultimate collection or something. Uh, and yeah, Flesh Gordon. Yeah, I've seen. I I, I actually own Flesh Gordon because it was a, it was on sale when I was at Borders. I was like, you know what, I am going to check this out just because it's it's like a remake. It's pretty bad that we. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty terrible. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. It's pretty terrible. But uh, yes, yeah, so I guess so I'm going as Prince Voltaire tonight. I'm uh, gonna gonna have fun. Gordon's alive. And dive. Do <laughs> what? I said, and Troy knows this is horrible. How? Oh, I saw it years ago. It must yeah, have been dude. before we were married, because I don't remember ever seeing that with you or you watching it. Nope. They had it at the video store that I worked at. Ah. Oh, Flesh Gordon. Oh, you're talking about Flesh Gordon. Flesh Gordon. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's. It's it's not really hard. It's not a hardcore. It's it's soft, very, softcore. Very, so, yeah, yeah. It's not you know. It's 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 like Cinemax, Skinemax kind of thing. It's and not even you know, really. barely. Yeah, yeah, even barely that. But uh, it's it's more it's more innuendo than anything else. Yep. So um, yeah, let's 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 get started here now. I've I don't know what version everybody's got. Now I've got. The version I got off of uh, the high seas. Off the high, seas. yeah. I got the, I got it off the high seas. Um, it's uh, an hour fifty one or so. Uh, I'm I'm at the twenty one second mark on mine, but let's just say just in uh, we are looking at the space before the universal logo comes in. So before it's just it's just a space scene. Before the Universal logo comes on, I'm guessing you and I have the exact same. Uh, Possibly, exact did same yours? Style. Did yours have a studio canal at the beginning? Um, yeah, it's like a, yeah. It's, okay, yeah. So it's the same. It's the same. It's this is probably a DVD rip then. Um, uh, yeah, Blu-ray. So, yeah, Blu-ray. Yeah, Blu-ray rip. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so I'm at 21 seconds on mine, which is about what you know it is. It's just before Universal logo comes on. So let's see if being the merciless will destroy Earth, or if there is a savior of the universe. Uh, <laughs> so, doom, doom, doom. oh yeah, oh yeah, Queen. Oh please, yeah, I'm gonna be queen. I'm gonna be queening out there the whole thing. I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So in three, two, one, go. Universal. Yep. Universal Studios, an MCA company, which is very, you know, it's very interesting to see the Universal thing and then how the film starts. So it's actually pretty appropriate. Yeah, right. And with the music a little bit, yeah. Uh, Clytus. Yeah, I love the. Uh, it's just the era these special effects come from. It was very yeah. Superman, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Earth. There's one no atmosphere. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right? yeah no clouds, just a ball, like a little stress ball that you would get. Uh, Earth. I love how they say Earth. Earth. Earthquake. Yeah. Earth. And do they even say why he's got such a hard on for Earth specifically? Well, well, it's the uh, he goes through the universe testing civilizations. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. The universe, mm. of course, just just the absolute classic uh, Queen soundtrack. Yeah. And I love the use of the uh, the comic book, um, you know, strips. Yeah, you know, the, at the yeah, the Al like that Alex Raymond yeah. book and stuff like that. Yeah. Or Ornella Muti. Oh, what yeah. a beautiful woman! And there, Max von Sydow, the Emperor Ming. What? But what's what's funny is with Queen when Queen. Uh, when Dino De Laurentiis was, uh, you know, getting this film together, he'd never heard of the band Queen. Mm. And when someone approached me about it, he's like, who are the Queens? Who are the Queens? <laughs> <laughs> queens. <laughs> and, but Queen jumped at the chance that it was like, boom, yeah, we're doing it. Started in 1979, so. Yep. I think it's when they started doing all the, uh, well, well, just uh, Richard O'Brien. Uh, if anybody remembers him from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, but you're right, you're right about those old comic. Yeah. The use of the old comic it just makes it beautiful. I have a somewhere. I have a collection of some old Buck Rogers, but I don't have any old Flash. Yeah, and that that coloring style with the little dots that very much dates the artwork. You know that oh, like pop yeah, style. Yeah. You know. Dum, 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 dum. God, that beat. Right. It's got Producer, that very you know different. That very visceral kind of feel to it mm -hmm. you know and i think we'll get more into that when we when we have sound engraver on and we're talking about xanadu how music is so important to the the the, the feeling and the the ambiance you know oh yeah i mean and, and like i said the having queen this with that driving rock sound throughout the right. entire thing i mean if you give this film an or an orchestral soundtrack it's not the same no exactly i don't think it, it'll it wouldn't i don't think it would have held up as well and i love this he's he's a big time quarterback right and he's driving a station wagon right <laughs> i just think that's funny 
Now, in the original lore, it wasn't a, he wasn't an American football player, was he? What was he? Um, I I actually don't know. I really have to look that up. I am not sure what he was. I don't even, know if he was a pilot or a soldier or yeah, even from the. I think because, he was a, but I think he for some reason I think he was an athlete. He he was some sort of an athlete, I think. But because it was, um, you know, usually in the serials and stuff, you jump right into the, you know, because you're 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 following on a on an episodic basis. He's in space. He's doing his adventuring thing. So unless mm-hmm. you saw the very first episode, there wasn't a lot of talk about what he did. You know. Right. Yeah. But in this, they, I mean, they they set up a lot of stuff. One, he's an athlete, so he's. He's in shape. He's strong. He's agile. Yeah, and he's been taking piloting lessons, so he he kind of knows his way around flying. Right. So that sets him up as being able to, you know. And and as campy as this is meant to be, there is good writing there because you have that backstory that explains why he can do the things he does. There's there's yeah. some explanation. He's a he's he's learning to be a pilot. He's he 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 does have the athleticism and so forth. Yeah. Uh, one little piece of trivia: Sam J- Sam J. Jones's hair is naturally brown, and so they dyed it blonde. Oh, really? Um, Melody Melody John Melody Anderson, mm-hmm. her hair is naturally blonde. They had to dye it brown. <laughs> wow. But so see, they, they did all the hair They were thinking through they 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 had they made their casting decision based on whatever criteria they felt appropriate but they still wanted the actors to look appropriate right yeah you know like Troy was saying it's you know he's got the athletic background he's learning how to fly a plane it's so much more realistic than some of these other ones where they're suddenly put in a situation and suddenly they know how to fly, but you don't have any history that they know how to do this. Or they know martial arts, but you've never seen them fight before. So it's like, okay, how do they know this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like in Buck Rogers, you know, he was an astronaut. Right. Exactly. So he knew how to, he knew how to fly. He knew, he knew uh, aerospace stuff. So. Yeah. And one other little detail. You know, now that you've pointed out to me that they've colored their hair, they've colored their eyebrows as well. Yeah. You know, that's a detail that's often overlooked. Yeah. And I, and I know another thing. Flash was supp- supposed to have blue eyes. Uh, Sam Jones couldn't wear the contacts, so his eyes are his normal color. Wow, at least they thought to try. Yeah, they were trying, but he just he couldn't adapt to them. They may not have dyed her eyebrows. I mean, I'm blonde and my eyebrows are dark. But his had to be because you can't light just by, you know, you know pencil. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Mr. Nantrick looked it up. He said that uh, Flash was a polo player. Polo. Yeah, I, I, yeah that sounds weird. Uh, I hear it. They play polo. The writer, uh, Sir Torrin Clegane, says the writer of the movie was one of the writers for the Adam West Batman series. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. And one of the names that was considered to play uh, Flash was Arnold Schwarzenegger. But he had, his accent was way too thick. Yeah. That would have been interesting, but hard to buy. Uh, yeah, I, I would, well, the funny thing is, because one, they could have dubbed him, which I think would have looked silly. Yeah, but they dubbed Sam J. Jones almost the entire film because he wouldn't come back. He was having a, a contract dispute Contractual issues, yeah. with uh, with Diego De Laurentiis, and he wouldn't come in to do the uh, the audio dubbing. So his voice isn't really heard that much in the film. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Boomer brought up that he liked in the Temple of Doom where Willie assumed Indiana Jones knew how to fly the plane, but he didn't. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said he can fly a plane but not land it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that 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 would fill me with a great deal of, of confidence, that's for sure. Yeah. I like it. Why are you running away? One, you're holding a gun on me. Two, you want to send us up in a in a rocket. Yep. Yep. I love how you see Ming's face in yeah. the fireball. No explanation of it. It just is. Yep. It's always funny how their their connection is is basically they were flirting the day before. Right. <laughs> they've they've both been like eyeing each other. Well, how much connection do you have to have when you're in a life and death situation, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the actor playing Munson played Porkins in Star Wars. Is that where I'd seen him? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting some uh, movie audio bleed again. Okay, maybe it's, it's possibly me. Maybe let me. I can I'll turn my volume down as low as I possibly can. Is that better? How's that, Al? Okay, I'm just hearing mine now. Yeah. Okay, good. I was just getting, I was getting that weird little echoey. It's a great mad scientist kind of eyeball eyes. Now, I'll, I have to admit that as a kid, I did not pick up on how much chemistry they those two seem to have, you know, because you're not focused on the flirtiness, you know. All right. I need, I need to get a shirt like that one day. Just flash. <laughs> but if you think about it, he is a celebrity. He's wearing his merch. Mm -hmm. you know? Makes yeah, sense. exactly. Just like, just like nowadays, you see wrestlers wearing their merch. Right. It's like the big thing now. Well, and what answer do you expect? I mean, if he is crazy, is yeah, he, yes, I am crazy. So, again, looking back on this with more adult sensibilities, I think about that guy that just recently died launching himself into his, his homemade rocket you know, trying to prove that the earth was flat or whatever it was he was trying to prove. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like he almost got away with it, except he got sucker punched. Yeah. Was that a microwave? Well, oh. <laughs> 
Well, now you've done it. And I and I love how they use the the old designs yeah. for the ships. Now, this is something I wanted to say about the design of the ship. Yes, it's definitely that classic design from you know the the original serials and from the the comic books and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Right around the time that this came out, my mother got me for uh, for Christmas um, this big fold up rocket you know, that you could, you know, get into and play with and stuff. Oh, and, yeah, I've seen and, that. And in my mind, it was this rocket. So I was Flash Gordon blasting off into space, you know? And I look, it's like you need one person on one side, someone else on the other side. It's poorly, that's a poor design. If you Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kind of like the TARDIS, right? Yeah. Well, the TARDIS is a, yeah it's supposed to be flown by what six people? I think it was six or eight. I don't remember. Yeah. And yes, before anybody says it, yes, it does look like a penis. <laughs> it's a rocket. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. There's a reason it's called the pocket rocket, right? Yeah. I I remember thinking when I was like, you know, you know, young fifteen year old Al, this was a pretty hot little scene with them like holding hands yeah. and her pulling at her shirt. Yeah. Oh, and Lister points out when you think about it, both Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok owe a lot to Flash Gordon. Yeah, mm -hmm. Star Wars too. You wouldn't have Star Wars without Flash Gordon. Well, I think uh, Taika Waititi could do a great Flash Gordon film. Right. Because I, uh, if he sticks to these kind of visuals, I think he'd be a great guy to do it. Agent Boomer asked if I ever wanted to build a rocket in my backyard. Sure, I would love to build a rocket. I wouldn't get into it. I just uh, like to shoot it off. Yeah, the guy, the guy right there is the guy who played Lobot in Empire. I was wondering that. Yep. That's right. I was reading. That's, I was reading the trivia on IMDb. <laughs> I remember them talking about how they did the colors for this, but I can't remember exactly. It, it was like paint and water and all this. You know, say, it was very practical, yeah. very practical stuff, and like filmed, you know, just filmed in a certain way, and just they liked how it looked. Hey, are those miniatures or a, a mad painting? Uh, what the ship? Yeah, uh, the backgrounds. Um, like the city in the background. Probably, I don't know. It might be a might be a combination. <laughs> I can see them building it though. It's not a question of whether she remembers. She has to wake up. Yeah. Like I say, you go from a film three years earlier and even earlier that year where they, you have these stormtroopers, and then now you've got these shiny guys. Yeah. What a, what a, and I think it was a good idea to make them so different. So comic booky. Yeah. Well, it gets me as they got out of the rocket without even bothering to test the air to see if it was breathable. Well, keep in mind they are civilians. They probably didn't even think about those kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, that red guy looks like that mask would come in handy to these days. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. And that's, oh, your, that's your there's your background, right? Yep. Right, come up. Well, yeah. When that opens up and you see the hall. Yeah. Up. 
you know, they actually kind of look a little like the uh, the Emperor's Royal Guard in Return of the Jedi. Just yeah, know, a little bit. Kmart version. Yeah, the full red, the full red, not the armored ones. Yeah, the full red. I was just looking for the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Okay, just kill the creature from the black lagoon. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. <laughs> I like how they do all they at least made the lizard man look like a lizard man. But yeah. uh like the like a few minutes you'll see Prince Thun, who I think was like a lion guy on a lot of the a lot of the cartoons and stuff. Oh, and by the way, I noticed that that little hovering drone or whatever, you can see its wires all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. You see wires on a lot of these things. I wonder if I said that's just alone. Yeah, a little bit. Brian, the other guys what? are time lords. I reckon it's a hat. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Okay. Agent Boomer says he's hearing the movie over the stream, so somebody's got their their volume too high. Hey, well, see, mine's, I'm on a uh, headphone, so yeah. well, I can just hear it a little. I can just hear it a little bit. Is that better? There's I thought I heard the lizard man. I'll turn mine down. One. For some reason, my microphone keeps just shooting back up to full when I turn it down. Well, then you're going to have to mute it if you're not actually talking because that's getting to be a problem. <laughs> now, he is a time lord. <laughs> He's right. Yeah, uh, that is true. Well, Brian Blessed was on... Uh an episode as well. Was he? I believe so. I, uh, I think he was on uh, during. I don't know if it was the. I don't know if it was uh, the fifth Doctor's run. Now, see another thing is what we're seeing is as as we're seeing all the different factions, we see they're all like they're all antagonistic to each other, you know? And yeah, yeah Ming is clearly a, a despot, but he is kind of maintaining the peace, you know, or playing them off each other. We don't know which. That, probably a little of both. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody's going to be able to overthrow them unless someone can get them up to all work together, you know? Exactly. And that's why Flash is there. Right. The actor who played Tarkov reminds me of Alan Rickman, says Mr. Much Mr. Matchstick. Oh yeah, I can see that. Now Alan Rickman, he could have played Ming. I think, you know, with the with the right sure. uh, you know, buzz his head. Agent Boomer said, this, <laughs> then Mr. Matchstick is saying, is this, is this what LSD looks like? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. A little bit, man. Could be. I mean, that is a rough, that's a rough place to be in. Yeah. Fall on your sword to show your loyalty. And you see, you see the drone. Like, yeah, I know what you're about to do. <laughs> yep. And Prince Thun is a 
is a major character in the in the uh, the old stories. Yeah, he's he's as important as uh, Voltan and Baron. But of course, the problem here is it's only going to be one film. They weren't planning to do a whole series of films. Uh, actually, they were. They were signed to do sequels. And the reason they didn't do it is because this film didn't do as well as they oh, wanted. I see. Yeah, they were si- they were signed for multiple films because it it as I recall it barely seemed to end. I mean, it really wrapped up. You know, it didn't really. Well, sort of. They had that. They had that sweet little. You know, the yeah. way you know the, the question mark. Hello. I mean, when he. Oh God, she is so hot. <laughs> Um, remember he, he, when he zapped himself, who knows what he did? True. 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 He could have, trans- he could have transported himself. I like those outfits too. Yeah. Th- those outfits are quite nice. Yes. 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 They are. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take her long. <laughs> hey, <before>. remember me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, his his eyebrows are a little bit darker here. Yeah. Um, you're talking about costumes. Ming's costumes were like seventy pounds. Wow! And very hard. He could he could only stand it for a little while. I would they imagine. were so heavy. Yeah. Oh, and Lister says that Flash Gordon's only fighting skill was football tackling. I'll tell you what, that's pretty good. You know, if you don't know what he's doing, if you're from an alien planet and you start running some guy with your with your shoulder down bashing, that's as good of a martial art as any any other. I, I have heard, uh, you know, American football, you know, and rugby compared to you know gladiatorial games. Yeah. Mr. Matchick says the girl has a body. Um, if you're talking about Ornella, well, they all do. They're all hot. Ornella, Ornella Muti, though, Muti. Uh, yeah, she is, she is, uh, she has got the curves in the right places. And there's, again, here's that the special effects that are very dated, but I still really like. You, you get this kind of, this kind of, um, uh, aura effect uh, a lot in Xanadu. We'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I was checking out the copy last night, and I and I was just I was just zipping through it, and I got to the end scene, and I I just had to finish it. Yeah, <laughs> the whole the whole of disco. <laughs> I, for, I forgot I forgot how hot that uh, she she was yeah. in that film. Whew. Yep. Especially that one uh, leopard skin outfit. Oh, uh, yeah. I just thought she had amazing hair. Now, see, I would love to be able to say that. Prepare her for my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. She's already turned on just by the fact yeah. that he's fighting back. Yep. Yeah, she doesn't see that very often. <laughs> oh, Lister said I felt bad for him when he got kicked in the crotch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would I did too. And here's where instinct comes in. He, got, yep. he has that thing that's like, like oh, a yeah. Off. It's a scrimmage line. Boink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Voltan. I just dig Voltan so much. Looks like, I don't know nothing. I didn't see nothing. Yep. <laughs> Are your men on the right pills? <laughs> I should execute their traitor. <laughs> And I love the fact that 
talk. <laughs> the egg that he's holding is not absolutely necessary, but it, it it's part of the, the routine for him. You know? Yeah, it's well, it's he muscle memory. Keeping his yeah, yeah, uh, he, it's. I, I love that too. She's like, okay, I'll be a cheerleader. And that was our idea too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it wasn't written that way. <laughs> <laughs> Voltaire, boink. Yeah, I do remember him being one of my favorite characters just because of that. Yeah, he's a card. No, it's not ball. Oh, oops. Darn you, Sarkov. Oh, we were having so much fun. <laughs> You're talking about Clytus earlier. Um, he was, uh, that's Peter Wingard. He, he was a fairly popular English actor. I bet she could handle Baron. She's got that beautiful, like that European yeah. model look. Yeah. Mingo meantime. What if that's anything like central time? Uh Timothy, I would have loved to have had Timothy Dalton's career. He has kissed some beautiful women. Yeah. <laughs> has nothing to do with it. she didn't ask you about yeah. you trust her do you like her yes you do <laughs> that would be an irritating helmet to wear right The chef will be upset. <laughs> That's a nice outfit, too. Oh, yeah. run up <laughs> that's just bizarre yeah it's such an easy effect to do too yeah just flip it up you know flip your film over <laughs> uh, yeah let's just do small talk why not I would list are nothing more humiliating than being executed in a, in a leather speedo. I don't know if you got the body to pull it off, you know. I mean, if they put you in a leather speedo, it might be good to get it over with. And just ha just have to yeah. just give in to the gas, right? Just just kill me already. Mr. Tori Gagay said this um, movie was Brian Blessed's dream come true. He used to play Flash Gordon when he was a kid. Brian, Bl Brian Blessed is an interesting character. If you ever get a chance to read about him, definitely, definitely suggest it. Agent Boomer said he owns the Flash Gordon DVD. It came in a four pack of Battlestar Galactica, the movie, Doom, oh, yeah. and Starfighter. Yeah. That's a great little collection to have. Yeah, I read about, I read about that collection. I, that would be a sweet collection to have. I mean, I have I have them all, just not in Seven. one collection. 
I also like that his costumes were changing throughout the movie. You know, it's like just so ostentatious. I mean, Bing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And these sets were pretty incredible, too. I mean, they must have spent a fortune on this. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, they used, to, they used a lot of uh, matte painting and green screening, but sure. But they they definitely a lot of the money and there's a lot of money there in those costumes and man, you look at the doctor and thinking that she spent time with him. That's a lucky man. And she is a woman of varying, uh, tastes. Yep. <laughs> Not exactly someone you would think that someone like her would, would choose. Well, I think she kind of, uh, uses what she's got to get yeah. what everyone else has. Yeah. Get under them now if I have something over them later. <laughs> it's a sign of weakness. How does Flash's hair get so good looking? <laughs> You put them in a hair dryer like that. Yep, exactly. But I guess if you're in as good a shape as Sam Jones is, you can get away with that little leather speedo. Oh, yeah. Mr. Magic is going to be way more entertained than I thought I was going to be. <laughs> oh, this is a good movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's goofy, it's silly, but it's still a really good movie. And the good damsel distress just pass, just you know, passes out. Oh, God, couldn't have that today. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't want to either. It, it does seem kind of goofy, you know? I mean, it's like nobody really does that. We're way past the era of women, you know, having their, their waist cinched so tight they, they couldn't breathe, and so they'd pass out. Yeah. Their heart rate would go up the slightest bit, you know? You got to admit, that's a fancy coffin. Yep. You are a lucky man to have been picked by her, man. And, and like I said, <laughs> that she, happened, she wanted to get something from him, so she gave him something. Yep. I think I want a mirror in my coffin, too. Yeah. Just in case. Just for funsies. Not as dead as you thought you'd be. <laughs> Melissa Harris. <laughs> Harris, Flash Gordon versus Cordell Walker, who would win? Well, you know, Chuck Norris is not easily defeated. That's true. <laughs> You see the guy in the poking his head down from the the doorway. This is the spy that's not way too obvious. Oh, actually, no, I missed it. Yeah. Actually, that I probably is have noticed, I probably have noticed it. Never put two and two together. 
That is a sharp looking uniform. I really like that. Ain't it though? It's it's, it's it looks cool. Yeah, Owen Lister points out you can have a damsel in distress and still have a good character. Cases cases in point, Lois Lane, April O'Neil. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was I was joking around. Dale Arden proves to have a tough side to her. Oh yeah. And see, I I I the way I rationalize something like that, she didn't really pass out. She just gave up. You know, yeah. she's like, okay, it's done. And she was emotionally drained, and I don't care anymore. I'm going to torture you, but I'm going to put you on a comfy chaise lounge to do it. <laughs> Tell me more of this, Dizan. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of. Mm -hmm. Man, those are awesome eyebrows. Oh, yeah. I almost put light eyebrows like that on your picture, but I decided to just leave it as is. <laughs> it's aiming right at his crotch. <laughs> and, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Right? So, <laughs> it does kind of come off that way. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to fill you with gamma radiation and you're going to turn green. I think she she just passed away too. I don't know. I don't hold on. I, I don't know. Train is fine. <laughs> And this is actually also a, a really clever way of kind of showing you a little bit of his background and whatnot in flesh. Yeah. And like the fact that he had been uh Yeah. Part of the holo the Holocaust and all. Yeah. And his wife and all that. You know, you, you start to he, he's not so two dimensional, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. The the lady play, who played Kala passed away many years ago. Uh, I th for some reason I thought it was more recent than that. Papa. <laughs> yeah. That would be freaky remembering yourself in the womb. Right. <laughs> It's like, wow, what a memory. I, I'm still just so blown away by the sets and the props and the, I mean, Oh, the the overall the, the entire design. Yeah, and it makes me wonder: was any of this reused in other movies? It had to have been. Because so much, six. so much must have gone into this. Yeah, I love that little ship. Yeah. Yeah, those visuals are really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And it has to be paints and oils suspended in 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 a aqueous solution. But yeah. man, that's cool looking. Yeah. 
And these are just mountains floating in space. Well, like all the all the kingdoms are like different little floating yeah you know, like like vault like uh the hawkman's kingdom is that is suspended by repulsor beams and see there you go they don't even understand the concept of the idea of of these disparate governments you know coming together just has never occurred to anybody yeah <laughs> God, that's your life come on yeah right give me some That's a cool looking decanter. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's a drug. Yeah, maybe it's for the best. <laughs> Looks like, I would imagine it tastes like like an apple teeny. Yeah, like an aperitif. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> I'm persuading you. Phrygia <laughs> literally. Phrygia literally is a big old iceberg. She said you're gonna have to do better than that to, to persuade me. Well he did. <laughs> I'm getting something, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Uh, yeah. Over. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I thought it was funny. Over. over <laughs> again. <laughs> Fake him out. It's been done to me. I got to hang up. I hang up. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, now you showed me how to tune in. How do I tune out? <laughs> That's quality stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having her as a slave. A, I really a, like those glasses. Just, just like that. Yeah, no, it's kind of a cool. It, At but, first, it looked like it was yeah, broken. Yeah, no, that's why I was thinking it, it has this like broken look to it. <laughs> Nighty night. I feel like someone should have responded, hail Ming back, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. it seems rude not to. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Master saying, I would have laughed so much if her head went lower and lower as the scene went on. <laughs> right. 
okay, this is pretty cool. You know, this yeah. scooped out little planetoid thing. And how far to Yoda's hut? <laughs> it does have a certain big of a feel. Right? <laughs> Look, Ming is wearing pasties. <laughs> you know, I'll never be able to unsee that. Now. <laughs> You're welcome, Al. He's getting ready to get friendly. Bucka chicka bow wow. Slayer had nice legs. You know, she wasn't bad. I mean, come on. Oh, no, she was hot. Although the way he said you it leads me to believe like, that he knew her and he'd already, you know, been already there, been there done, done that. that. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's something else you can't unsee. She just took her shoes off. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she's tough. Yeah, but she's got to take the shoes. Girls in their shoes. Okay, everybody's nice. impression. Nice move. <laughs> now that one, there's no explanation for where that comes from. No. <laughs> but she doesn't leave the shoes. No. And these are the mentats. I love the old fashioned microphone up there, too. Oh, yeah. Owen oh, Lister's asking what kind of green drink that was. I don't know. Absinthe? Green tea. Ooh, absinthe. I like that idea. <laughs> I just watched a video about uh, absinthe. Don't put the shoes back on, woman. <laughs> Both say her like shoes off gets big Al hot. <laughs> Owen Lister says there is a tone of adult innuendos in this film. You think? Maybe a little bit. So the dude with the gold mask, why is he um, wearing a Mason symbol on his chest? Ah, who knows? Maybe he likes, maybe he likes stone cutting. <laughs> Actually, Mister Matchstick, if you're if you're interested in Flash Gordon, you should be able to find the uh, the original serials. They're definitely worth it. Oh yeah, yeah, they're really good. That's the Ewok Village. Uh, yep. In fact, so, uh, our listener just asked, imagine if Star Wars looked more like this film. I'll tell you, I at the time I wouldn't have thought anything of it. This was basically the way movies were back then. And the story is what really inspired your imagination.
Yeah, kid. We got time, Sam. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, time's I got 55, 55 28, 29, 30. 31, okay. 32. Uh, I'm just a wee bit ahead, like a few couple, like two seconds ahead. Now, you kind of like the Robin Hood Merry Men look of the I do too. I really like that. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to do Robin Hood one day. The 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 uh, Errol Flynn version. Oh yeah. And this is a great way to show, you know. Before it gets used later on, you know, in the story, this kind of establishes what it is and what it's for and what the stakes are. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, poor guy. Yeah. yeah, you're dead. And she's digging it. Uh, yeah. No. She's but, gotta uh, walk. I, she's gotta walk and she's not even that camouflaged either. <laughs> and she just goes around kissing everybody, doesn't she? <laughs> I'm trying to keep my waistline. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, womp womp. Sorry, <laughs> you just have to. Yes, ask the ask the man who loves you to watch the guy you want to have sex with. <laughs> Well, who who doesn't she want to have sex with? Though, you know, that's true. I mean, he he has picked a very uh, very uh, difficult woman to love. <laughs> you do get the impression that these these leaders of these communities are just not savvy enough to understand people's motivations. You know, mm -hmm. because if you did, you'd know. Yeah, get what you want from her, but don't expect her to be faithful to you. Just understand what she's all about. <laughs> Does anyone ever trust her twice? Okay, oh, well, listen, it's like if they ever remake Flash Gordon, it should not have a dark and gritty tone. Make it colorful, and for peace's sake, let Flash be a masculine hero and not a joke. Amen. I, I love this little bit, the way he was he was able to to defeat their 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 mind probe or whatever it was. He recited yeah. Shakespeare and 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 uh, mathematical Beatles formulas song. and Beatles songs. Yeah. Now, see, my take on that is, yeah, we don't like Ming, but right now I'm, you know, still the top yeah. dog in my little area, so I don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. Like I said, as long as, long as you don't upset Ming, you'll be all right. Right. And like you said, you, you know, you're, you're pretty comfortable in your world. I like the fact that it's gauntlets holding their hands and feet down. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> like we don't like doing this at all with a little yeah. smile. You know, it would have been funnier is if she just said, and I don't like you doing it to me at all, really. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the boar worms, and the boar worms. <laughs> See, there he is. <laughs> Probably watching his daughter get tortured and having a snack. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you, you you realize that's what he was doing previously. He he. That's how he and and she sat and watched uh, the execution of of uh, Flash Gordon. So you know. <laughs> She should get the message. This is how he is. You're no different than anyone else. A little Rocky Harlem. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. You know what would be funny is if the reptilians were actually amphibious so they could totally yeah. breathe underwater but they make it look like they're, you know, struggling for their lives. <laughs> they're just hanging out having a good old time. One says, you know, "Why are we pretending? We can we can breathe underwater." Yeah, but we don't want them to do something else to us. The princess and the boar worms, the next hentai. Yeah. <laughs> Owen Lister. <laughs> Owen Lister, she wouldn't have herpes. She would have space herpes. Oh, sorry. That's a different movie, too. Yeah. Ice Pirates, again. <laughs> we'll definitely have to do that on like a ice weird... Ice Pirates is a good one, when, when we're in a weird mood, do Ice Pirates. When are we not in a weird mood, Al? <laughs> Well, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly uh, easily. <laughs> Now, of all the hokey things, these guys flying with those wings is the hardest one to buy. Oh, I know. But but that that's just it. It's hokey. And yet they would have. And, and yet it, it works. You know? It would have been so easy to explain it away if it was like 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 Hawkman. You know, they they have some sort of anti grav belts, so the 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 wings aren't really keeping them aloft. Yeah. They just kind of propel them and steer them. <laughs> Indeed I do. Ew. A little bit. He did that totally yep. on his own. I would on, imagine. On his own. And her reaction was completely, that was the reaction she had when he goosed her. Yep, I would imagine. Wow, that's a nose. Mm -hmm. 
It's a sharp looking knife. Mm. Down the creek. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's so resigned that the yeah. world is just weird. He's like, yeah. oh, that figures got it. Then he takes his hand off. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Russian roulette, Arborea style. Yeah. Arbor Ar Arborean roulette. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like he's cheating. Yeah. He knows it's not something you really want to be testing. Oh, Alyssa is asking, but in a weird mood, do you mean high hammer or horny? Well, either way. Any would suffice. I, I thought this was so clever. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good bluff. Mr. Max is saying uh, Timothy Dalton would make a good Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah. he would. Back then he would have. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to play by the rules. Why should I? A lot of the stuff on our on Arboria when they uh when they do the uh T V versions gets cut. Especially like the stuff when they're in the pit. Yeah, I guess it's that's gauge. not yeah. it's not strictly necessary. So I can understand yeah. that. And he's dead. Okay. That was a good movie. <laughs> Boy, good thing that rubber hose happened to be there. <laughs> Now it should be like some creature's tail. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I love and I love this too. Everything's out to kill you. <laughs> right? It's like, oh come on. This isn't fair. This is totally not fair. <laughs> yeah. 
Ew. Ew. <laughs> I love the design of these ships. Yeah, I would like being a big mosquito. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sir Torek Legate says, so this planet is Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. I like that his eyes aren't even open yet. <laughs> you haven't yeah. woken me yet. <laughs> In other words, five more minutes. <laughs> like I said, of all the places, though, you got to admit, the, Hawk, the Hawkman Palace is awesome. Right? <laughs> and they look at each other, what? <laughs> How did he get cleaned up? Very roughly, but he gets it down to the second. <sighs> yeah, I don't think I'd be jumping around by that pit there. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. That escalated quickly. <laughs> I know. And suddenly they're engaged. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mash is like said, no, it's not it's not Australia. It's the fan man's kingdom of Louisiana, especially specifically the swamps. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that guy that just tossed the, the whips, he's got a one heck of a deviated septum. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It'll make things more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. I'm watching the same fight you are, girl. I love Brian Blessed when he does that big laugh. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here to tell me to watch out. I don't know what I'd do if you hadn't told me that. Ooh. Uh. So during a, a lot of during this fight, I read that uh, the paint was still fr fresh on, on like the spikes and stuff. Really? So, so, he'd get all, so he'd be getting silver paint all over themselves. Oh, gosh. And they'd have to clean up after each take. Oh. You know, Owen Lister says, I have to say, Timothy Dalton knew how to act pissed off and really look intimidating while doing so. Or maybe he's not mm -hmm. acting. Maybe he's just a dick. 
he does have that look like he'd be a dick. Yep. He could be the nicest guy in the world. I don't know. But he looks like he wouldn't give you the time of day if you know you asked for it. Stories that Nanette has told, she's she's read some stuff that he is kind of a dick. So I'll be honest with you. If I was in that situation, I'd take advantage of those those spikes to grab onto to keep from falling off yeah. the edge. Okay, so yeah, that's exactly what he does. I okay, care. Goodbye, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> you see how his butt looks kind of silverish i think that's yeah the paint. That's probably like the paint. very probably some of the, some of the lighter the lighter one that they can be careful don't give yourself a vasectomy <laughs> huh. oh flash <laughs> Owen Lister, I can see Brian Blessed as Gimli from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I can see that too. No, no, social distancing, social distancing. Yep, they're here. <laughs> you know, you got to give it to him coming there with no guard. Just well, blindness. there there is a certain amount of arrogance. You figure, well, you know, yeah. if you kill me, you're all dead. Or we just kind of declare war on me. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh -huh. uh. Ooh. Yeah. And done. <laughs> Ew. I like it reminds me of one of those little squeezy things where the yeah, eyes are exactly. What choice do you have now? Yep. Yeah, you, know, you were talking about how, like, you know, weird the wings look. You must admit, though, be an easy uh, cosplay. Oh, yeah. Because you don't have to really get all that intricate. And I'll tell you, that's the it kind of thing that I would, would do so that I can reuse that to do Hawkman or an angel yeah. or anything, you know? Mm hmm <sighs> You know, he's actually, that's actually very astute. It doesn't matter that we're this high up, you know? Yeah. Once, you, once you're once you high enough to hit terminal velocity, anything higher doesn't make any bit of difference. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Agent Boomer got hungry watching the guy's uh, tongue squirt out of his mask. <laughs> and then I read Owen Lister's comment, and I totally misread the first thing that he, he said. He said, Clytus, and I thought he said something else entirely. Oh, Cl oh yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they do spell Clytus with a K. Well, what are we talking about? <laughs> like that head thing he's got. Yeah, that really is cool. Wow. Uh, the fact is, his tactics are sound. Uh -huh. You get people scared, they're willing to give up all of their, their rights and privileges because, oh my God, somebody please protect us. I want you on my side, but I want your woman to have my children. <laughs> And again, still the arrogance. Do you know how easy it would be for him to just push him right off the edge? Mm -hmm. I mean, even if he gets shot by the, the guards, he still got forward momentum. His dead body's still going to knock him off the edge. I love that like Art Deco style of you know the, the spaceships. Yeah kind of got a little bit of that from the prequels in star wars yeah i've i've always loved this sh that ship style <laughs> and he just happens to find a ship yep. just by chance a rocket sled Which I'll tell you, looks like it would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Lister says, I do like how Ming tries to convince Flash to join his side. That's exactly what I was getting at. This is the tactic that he's using to keep all the rest of the, uh, the factions in line. You know, you, you, you have one person in charge who you allow to have a fiefdom and maintain their loyalty. <laughs> Perfect timing. So this is the second time he's come back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> Agent, Agent Boomer said he wants a tongue sandwich. I want hot wings. Oh, jeez. Uh, something else I'd want to eat. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Oh. 
why not? Everyone else gets to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you damn Mongo person. <laughs> this is this is pretty hot though. Pillow uh, fight. Chick fight. That's a heck of a bed, though. Yep. <laughs> because you can't be dumb enough not to have learned this lesson by now. <laughs> I know. Wow, that's a great outfit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes us better than you. <laughs> she, she looks like a green Queen Amidala. <laughs> yeah. Uh... yeah. Perfect timing, too, you know. Nothing mm -hmm. can save me. Flash. I mean, Flash Gordon is far away, and he is coming closer. Yeah. <laughs> Owen Lister, good call. Favorite scenes were the football fight and the Hawkman versus Ajax battle. Oh, yeah. Of course, they had uh, more accurate um, gunners than right. movie would have ended right there. <laughs> right. Heroes must always depend on the uh, inability for the bad guys to hit anything. Well, but in fairness, a, a city barrage, you know, is not going to be able to hit one little sky cycle. You know, that's true. It, yeah, it's it's shooting for big ships like this. You know. Or Rocket Ajax. Um, I need to mute for a second. Uh, okay. I'll be right back. All right. Now that is one heck of a collection of soldiers. And if you think about it, you have the Hawkmen that are like your, your, your air troops, like the Air Force. You know, you got the Arborea, who's like your, your scouts. You know, they all have their, their, their specializations. <laughs> it's kind of like the the whole Mutara Nebula thing. We can't see in there, but we got to go in. Here we go. Do 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 do. I'm back. Hey hey. I just uh. 
hadn't seen my mom for a while. I just wanted to make sure she was. She's doing okay. Yeah, uh, it's just she's usually in bed by eleven, and it's late. I don't know if uh, she's just doing stuff for. But she answered back. So. You know what it is about this scene? It's it's the dive and and all that. Yeah, and it's the music. That music. That yeah. music. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, 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 no. And, and War Rocket Ajax is a very sluggish ship. Well, it's big. It's, it's, yeah. It's got a lot of firepower. It probably can take a lot of beating, but it's not very maneuverable. Yeah. Like you'd expect from a battleship. Ooh. Tough to be a Hawkman in the first wave. <laughs> yeah. But then there's, you know, just so many of them. They're just going to. Yeah. I mean, it's the old well, Russian like, tactics, you know? It's like, yeah. It's like, it's like D-Day, you know? They just yep. overwhelm them. Meow, meow, meow. It really gets going actually i would say uh sir Torin, that each each of the the different um factions had their own specialization that brought something to the you know to the uh, insurrection so to speak so but but you have to give it the hawk man took the brunt Oh yeah, they took the four. They took the four. Well, front. in this battle, sure, but you know this this was an ongoing storyline. You know, so mm -hmm. there were other battles to be fought too. <laughs> Who wants to live forever? Dive, and that's a different <laughs> Queen song, but very appropriate. Yeah, even though it was earlier than you know. It'd be funny if that line gave them the idea for the song. Right. Owen Lister uh, says that this tune is called Hero. Yeah. Makes sense. And what's great is the title of the song is Hero, which you assume is a reference to, to Flash, but not necessarily. There are a lot of heroes in this scene. Mm -hmm. You know, Voltan is one. He's clearly a hero in this, in this scene himself. <laughs> they just wing me. <laughs> waka waka. Blessed would have made a good friar, a great friar Tuck. Well, he was in um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves as Robin's father. Just blow up everything. Right through the chair. <laughs> you know, your comparison to the D-Day invasion is very apt. Because once they get past the, the beach, then they just start taking out the pillboxes. Yeah. I always wonder, like, big pictures like that, when they make them up, what if the actors actually would get a, get a chance to keep it if they wanted? Right. <laughs> Can you imagine Melody Anderson having that like in her attic? Right. <laughs> Someone says, "Well, it belongs to the studio. It's my freaking picture." Right. <laughs> what are they going to do with it? You'll never use it again. 
Except in an auction. That'd be about it. Hmm. And you're dead. <laughs> long live you know, Flash. Flash, yeah. If you notice on the wall, long live Flash. Tell me about this man, Houdini. Good shot. Uh, need to mute for just okay. about a few seconds. You could tell that Brian was having so much fun during the scene. Yeah, he really did seem to be enjoying himself. I know I would. I bet. <laughs> you haven't changed for crying out loud. We're in the middle of something here, dude. <laughs> Actually, a little, a little more maneuverable there. <laughs> Remember to keep your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like the fact that I mean, this is the way you fight a battle. You 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 defeat the Ajax, but then you take it and turn it against them. Yeah. The boom. <laughs> I like the uh, the feather effect off of the gauntlets or the yeah. vendorses or whatever they are. Yeah, and the aliens use Here Come the Bride. <laughs> Unless he's playing it in her honor. Well, remember, they visit Earth. Yeah, so they, they, know. Would, they would know. Yeah, they would have records and everything. They know some stuff, yeah. I liked, I liked all creatures will make merry. And then when the next one goes by, I love death. <laughs> yeah. I love the material that her dress is made out of those little uh, beads or whatever. Mm -hmm. Actually, her outfit is made from the same material. Which they knew they were going to do anyway. So, ooh, nice boots. <laughs> Touche, Mr. Magic. No, this isn't Here Comes the Bride. It's Space Here Comes the Bride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you loony bird. <laughs> I like how he's always got that smile. Huh. <laughs> that, that big old smile on his face. Not too bad. Wah, wah. See... Those weapons are not aimed. They're just the They're equivalent just of suppression fire, fire. yeah, in, in yeah. a grid pattern. <laughs> Freeze. They weren't going anywhere. Oh, 
okay, then I'll just shoot you. Okay, well, that pretty much puts an end to that. <laughs> she looks shocked. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you actually just shot me. <laughs> Boring conversation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the atomic generators? I don't know, but turbines to speed. <laughs> ah. yeah. What a world, what a world. <laughs> she's, she's made of the same stuff that killed Tasha Yar. Yeah. And so every time the red guys get hit, they scream out with that noise. It makes me think they're the same... Uh, the same creatures as as in crawl. Oh yeah, the uh, whatever it was under that armor. I'm trying to remember what they were called. Okay, kicking over the stand was not strictly necessary. Yeah. <laughs> The Empress of the Hour. <laughs> of the Hour? Yes. I need to use these if I ever get married, these vows. I promise never to blast her into space. Until it's even until it's deemed necessary. <laughs> well, for no other reason, because I don't have the means to do so. <laughs> See, and this is where Captain America stole the storyline from. Oh, where's the ring? Who's got the ring? <laughs> oh, good. Somebody's got the ring. He tells them to freeze and they never freeze. Okay, we'll just do that. <laughs> really? I have good reason why these two should not be wed. I'm speaking now. I will not hold my peace. That wasn't very, that wasn't phallic at all going right, right through the hole like that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that seems pretty dead. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Swoosh. Walk it off. Throw some dirt on it. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Chris was a Slayers. They were called Slayers and Crawl. Right. We'll definitely do a Crawl rewatch one day. Well, he kind of already has taken it. Yeah. See, this could have been an escape plan. Could have been a transport. Yeah. 
Could have put his essence in the ring. Like Sauron. <laughs> Mr. Magic saying Ming's not just dead. He's space dead. He's space dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like Voltaire, better late than never. And that was improv. The, yep. the jumping and saying, yeah, total improv. And it's and it's brilliant. Sometimes those improvised bits are the best, you know? Yep. And he's like, okay, cool. Yeah, he likes that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I do like this. This is pretty clever. Oh, yeah, the, the Hawkman. Yeah. Thanks. That's pretty cool. Flash. I mean, it's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and really, that's just a cheap way of saying if we want to do a sequel. Yeah. Well, they were planning to. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of great things about this movie. It really... Mm -hmm. It really is a good film. I do see why it has such a following now. But at the same time, I do understand why it was misinterpreted at the time. And, you know. Yeah, I mean, you really have to be the right audience. You know, you're, you're, you're Joe Average, you know, guy who doesn't really no flash or anything he'd sit in there and he'd, he'd see all like the weird bright colors I'm like what am i watching yeah you know but uh but but people who are one familiar with the character familiar with the history of the character and the and the look of the world i think would have been very happy yeah well, sky and clouds get their own little section there and since this film, a lot of other films have used that. Uh, and, and well, I mean, you even referenced, you know, Thor Ragnarok, that use of that oversaturated color to really right. drive home that that feeling of the, the comics, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a nod to, to what they're they're honoring, which is kind of the opposite of what you've been seeing from D.C. for so long. The desaturization, you know, right. and yeah. that, the darkness which I think clearly says you don't understand your source material. You're purposely ignoring your source material. Oh, so the cars used during filming are the, were supplied by Fiat Motors. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I guess there were cars right, at the beginning. At, yeah, yeah. At the very beginning, yeah. Sam J. Jones, Melody Anderson, Topol, Arnella Beauty. Yeah, Peter Peter Wingard. I guess he's Peter Wingard did some stuff in England. Not he's not really as well known in America, but Princess Aura's pet, Deep Roy. Yep, Deep Roy gets a lot of work. Yep. Yeah, yeah, especially in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He played like oh, yeah. 57,000 roles? Yeah, every single Oompa Loompa. 
which I think was a mistake. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like having the different the different ones. I like the exotic girls in Ming's bedchamber. Gina, yeah. Raquel, and Faye. They all have just one name. All the dwarfs. All the <laughs> Everybody hell you say with a mighty hand. Location in the Isle of Skye, Scotland. Wow. Been a lot of good whiskey was floating around. That's it. The characters and events depicted in this photo play are fictitious. Did you know that? Really? You mean we weren't watching a biography? I, you know. <laughs> I always, I always like that. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Flash Gordon, one of the great, great sci-fi films of not only the '80s but of all time. I, I love that film. It's if. if from the designs to the casting, just just great. I've I've seen it. Oh God, I mean, many you know in the high. I won't say the high double digits because not that often, but like yeah, around probably around twenty times. So I would I would think I've seen that film. It that was been a very years very incredible. Yeah, I saw it just a few weeks ago on Comet TV. <laughs> I sat and watched it. I was yeah. like, and this is actually before I knew we were going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, and I, it was, you know, like maybe a week or two before uh, uh, he uh, he passed away, sadly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, like I said, you know, uh, 40, 40 years holds up, holds up really well because they went for a certain style. Yeah, and I and I think that cartoon style kind of stands stands up. Sure, you know, sure, some of the effects are a bit dated, but uh, I, I think I think it holds its own. But uh, I, I again going back to the opening with the 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 comic strip, you know, bits. It kind of reminds you where it came from. So it's like mm -hmm. this is something that's kind of meant yeah. to be dated. There's a reason they're going with the whole Art Deco style. Because right. it's, I mean, it's intended I, to evoke a dated, you know, feel. And I truly appreciate that because uh, considering the year before, we had Buck Rogers. And it's great to see Buck Rogers. Yep. But it was a, it was a Buck Rogers with, with a modern aesthetic. Yeah. Or a more, you know, a more like Star Wars type treatment as opposed to uh, what we got here. And I I think it was a brilliant move to take, to take like you said, that that art deco feel that uh that thir that 20s 30s 40s look to yeah. the ships the designs and the outfits and you know just you know if you're going if you're going to do it put sparkles on it just put you know we'll have them sparkle too you know why not make it yeah. just go outrageous with it I, and i think it serves it well and i don't want to you know give the impression that i don't that I have anything against a modernized take on something. Buck Rogers, right. I thought was brilliant. I loved Buck Rogers. Right. Oh, if yeah. someone yeah. were to come along and do Buck Rogers again and update it again, I'd still be fine with it, but it has to be done excellently. You know? Yeah. Uh, of course, of course, first and foremost, first and foremost, it's always going to be the story. Right. If you have a, if you have a good story, that's that's ninety percent of your battle. I think about uh, Battlestar Galactica. You know, they took that, they yeah. updated it. You know, you could say, well, they made it dark and gritty. That's fine. They did mm -hmm. it very well with a very right. good story. Yes, there was a completely different take on it, but it did not dishonor what went before it. That no, is it, a great way to do it. You know. Yeah, it, it was like I said. You know, it was very. It was divisive among the fandom. Uh, a little bit, but I truly appreciate it because they they took the story, they took all the all the the full concept, and you know, yeah, basically brought it because back in the seventies, you know, we were in a different mindset when they did this one. We were right off of. Uh, 9-11 it was because yeah. it was 2000 2004 we were only a few years out of, out of 9-11 right so we're we're looking at 
a, a system of planets which has been attacked and yeah. in, in, in the most vile and complete way it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to have them, you know, playing, playing games at all. I mean, halfway through Battlestar Galactica, everybody's pretty okay with where they are. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know except for the odd slide on attack and, you know, whatever. Everyone seems to be in a good mood. This is, this is a post, this, I liked, especially the first episode after the original miniseries for the yeah. new Battlestar. Uh, I think it was called, what, 80, 80, 8, 33, 88. Something like that. It was a number. Something like it that. Very, it, was, very, it was a number. And, yeah. and it was like that after that many minutes that the Cylons found them. Yeah. And and it was just you just see the grinding down of the crew. And it was just brilliantly done. But yeah. I know a lot of people don't like I know because I know the professor doesn't like it. He was well, not a not a fan of uh not a fan of the of the the, the newer Battlestar. See, and, and, and I think that most of the fans that didn't like it to begin with came around very quickly if they watched it yeah. because yeah. they did do an excellent job with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that is the, the rare exception these days. You don't see enough things that are um, well thought out, well written. Even right. Battlestar Galactica itself, as it went on, it started to be like, Okay, what is every freaking buddy a Cylon? Ooh, big surprise! That person's a Cylon too. Yeah. You know what's going to be a real surprise? The one person who's not a Cylon. You know? yeah. Well, they only had twelve. They had right. this, the the original seven and the final five. Right. So you you knew or once you once the others were revealed. I was surprised by who did the you others watch, were. Did you watch any of the? Um, that prequel series that they had started, uh, Blood and Chrome, that that one, or Caprica, Caprica, yeah. I I watched a little bit of it, and I just really couldn't get into it. I liked it. Just, it. I was really bummed that it didn't go the distance. Yeah, I I just I mean it was quality, but it just it just didn't catch me. You know, it just didn't hook me. Mm -hmm. Now I will say I've always been a fan. It still am of uh, Alessandra Torresano. Oh yeah. The, Oh, uh, the girl that they had playing oh, yeah. the, the Cylon. She is a, a mighty, mighty beautiful lady. But <laughs> I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very shallow in, in many areas like that. Yeah, um, trying to about it. Yeah, Casey, Casey, Casey Scott's talking about unlike what they did with Picard. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that too. You know? I, I will, I will say, I will say this. Like I said. I could compartmentalize. I could chop it up. I loved what they did with Riker at the end. If anybody's seen the final episode, well, if you haven't, a lot of people have been seeing the, yeah. the picture being put around. So, good. yeah, they have it on. They have it on, on YouTube. But that scene is just you're like Riker got a big set of balls, baby, and I loved it. I thought that was so good. I, I, I few things about the final. I was a bit like suspect about like I, I i'm really shocked at how um well picard took what happened to him at the end i was like really <laughs> gets to, <laughs> they did that i guess as well i don't know if he'd be that that uh happy go lucky about it but he was i don't so, know if i was picard by that point i'd be like you know what i just don't give a crap anymore y'all yeah. can just go to hell but, yeah, well, you know, but uh, I, I think I, I think it's a good setup. Uh, I enjoy I enjoyed Picard overall, um, despite its flaws. I'm very I'm very easily entertained, as most of you know. So, uh, but I, 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 I was just like uh, I, I give, just, I'd give it I give it like out of ten I'd give it I'd give it a seven a six or seven. I. Yeah. Uh, I was just glad that the, the Klingons didn't factor into it so they couldn't crap all over them anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, They I think they made good use of the Romulans. The Romulans are always an easier villain because mm -hmm. they've almost always been the villain. Uh, we, you know, by the, by this time, they don't know what's going on with the Klingons, actually. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it would be nice to have a series done in the future instead of keeping going back. 
yeah. people who are doing Star Trek shows. Come on. I like that's one thing I liked about Picard is we got to see the future. We got to see something. We got to see what Riker says. Like, this is the toughest, fastest ship Starfleet's ever produced. And I got a fleet of them at my back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm just, he's just itching to use him. So, uh, but yeah, I, I'd like to see that. You know, I'd like to see a future series as opposed to the continual uh, returning, going back in history. Because when you go back in history, you change stuff and you, and you just make people people hate you the the danger with with prequels and, and, and we, we could do a whole show about prequels a prequel oh, oh, done God. a prequel done right thinks through the lore and and tells the story that was implied but never explicitly shown All and right. there shouldn't be too many surprises you know um and the things that are a surprise um are welcome surprises mm. my my uh, example that I would hold up for that would be Rogue One. Rogue One did oh, a great yeah. job of telling a story yeah. that you basically knew happened. We didn't really need it, but it also went out of its way to fill in a couple flaws that you know mm -hmm. had come up in in you know in that that whole thing about well why why is this thermal's exhaust port you know there oh it was there for reasons. yeah it was, it was specifically it was a, sabotage it was a sab it was a it was a yeah i i i thought i think rogue one is one of the best star wars films oh out there since disney I, came uh, since disney uh took yeah, over, absolutely it's definitely the best it's the best disney film uh best of the disney series i believe uh i still say solo is better than people think it is it's not a it's not it's not a great film by any chance but it's it's enjoyable enough to be an entertaining popcorn movie. Well, and again, I haven't seen it, and I can yeah. only take your word at it, and that's a sad statement because, uh, like many other Star Wars fans, they they burned us so many times, most of us have just walked away. So yeah. good luck to you. You know, let your, let your new fans support you because your old fans aren't. Yeah, now... Um, Outside, I do think the best thing Disney's done is Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, when you get when you really get down to it, but, and the thing is, what should have been the crown jewels, the three jewels in the in in your franchise mm -hmm. that you just bought, yeah. you really didn't give us what you needed to give us, which was something that's going to stand the test of time. Like I said, I, honestly, I enjoyed them for what they were. You know, uh, I know. They're not great films. I know. Uh, I still well. I still hold Force Awakens better than a lot of people give it its credit for. Last Jedi, like I said, for me, Last Jedi is worse now in my estimation because of uh, Rise of Skywalker. Exactly. Because I see in Rise of Skywalker the things that they could have been story elements they could have been doing uh, that I would like to have seen over three movies all squished into one film and they pretty much totally ignored <laughs> uh, episode eight, which now it's just, I mean, last Jedi is just completely irrelevant uh, even for its, uh, for its own sake. You know, and that's just... really the, the biggest sin because mm -hmm. you had, you had the, the license to print money and you done effed it up. And yep. now, if you're holding up Mandalorian as look, look, look what we can do. Yeah, you shouldn't even have to be holding on to that thread. You know, it shouldn't have been that difficult. You should have just told a good story about the classic characters. It's supposed to be the Skywalker story. Tell the Skywalker story. But no, you had to dump all over all of the fans and all of the legacy to give us new characters that you never developed, we never got to care about. So you please nobody, really. You know? <laughs> Age of Boomer saying Star Trek Picard isn't even worth ranting about. You know? You noticed I, I have like it, Age of Boomer. Exactly yeah, right. I, like I said, I enjoyed it. Would I? Would I say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread? Of course not. And see, that's the problem. Maybe I didn't get past the third episode of... because I didn't enjoy it enough to keep watching. 
Yeah, you know? and yeah, and the and the problem was it takes a long time before it really gets to the point. You know, it took it took it really took too long to uh, to get. Once they got in the space, it got a lot better. Um, yeah. A lot of the commentary that I've been hearing is that the feel of it seems to belay the whole idea that there was a lot of reshoots, a lot of re-edits, yeah. storylines that never went anywhere that were obviously dropped, other things that were put in. You're going, well, wait, where did that come from? Where was the development or introduction of that plot element? You know, um, yeah. And it just sounds like a bit of a mess. And look, Again, another example of this should have been a slam dunk. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was tell a good story, and you can't manage that. You really do need to stop. If you can't do it well, don't do it freaking at all. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, like I said, I still hold that it was it wasn't a bad show. Um, I, it could have been much. It could have been a much more. Uh, but it, it had its moments. It definitely did. Like I said, the uh, the when, when you had the when you had the Rikers on there, and uh, there was some stuff with uh, the crew of the Serena. Like I said, it really it really took until they got on that damn starship for it to really kind of break out. You mean once they started trekking? Trekking exactly. Once yeah. they started trekking, it was a lot better. Uh, Okay, so well, you know, we just had my rewatch, which means next week end is so your rewatch. So I've actually thought out because uh, you know I told you, uh, and I and I, I've I've alluded to the to to the rest of the group that uh, we got Xanadu coming up uh, mm -hmm. on the twenty fifth of of, um, of April. April. Thank you, thank you. Help me with my months here. Um, so. Nanette and I were talking and, and uh, I said, we, I, I'd like to start thinking out, you know, in advance what I'd like to do so I can give everybody a heads up where I'm going. So next week, what I would like to do is begin a kind of longer thematic arc with my weeks. I would like to explore some good time travel films. Okay. okay. Well, well, let's see. Okay. Let's see. So yeah, I'm the fourth. Wait, today's so you're the fourth. I'm the eleventh. You're the eighteenth. I'm supposed to be the twenty-fifth. Oh, I th How, thought happened. I was the twenty-fifth. Well, well, today's the twenty-eighth, and then the fourth is you. Then I'm the eleventh. You're the eighteenth. I'm sorry. Um, I must have miscounted. I I'm sorry. That's right. I mean, yeah, take the twenty-fifth. Can, can we switch the weeks then? You take yeah, the I'll, I'll, the I'll take the you take two I'll weeks take, in a row, basically. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah, I was just I just happened to be looking at it. Just said I'm like, uh, well, wait a minute. And then it just didn't add up when I looked at it. Thanks, thanks for but checking yeah, on that for me. Fine. So yeah, what no I would like to do for next week is even though I said I want to do the theme of time travel, this isn't really time travel, but it's kind of indirectly time travel. I want to do the movie Paycheck. Paycheck. That's the one okay. with, um, uh, it's, uh, what's his name? The, uh, crap. What's that kid's name? Uh, he played Daredevil. Um, uh, uh thank you. Ben Affleck. Oh, oh Ben Affleck oh, and Uma Thurman. You said, you said kid. And I was like, immediately just <laughs> Affleck wasn't even in my, uh, Ben Affleck is, I, I know him as a young guy. I know he's getting older too, but you know. I yeah. think of him when he was when he was a younger guy, but uh, yeah, a paycheck with Ben Affleck. It's not really time travel, but it has to do with knowing the future and how it, uh, you know, affects, you know, the outcome of things. So that's the one that I'd like to do next week. Yeah, I'm I, I'm, I'm checking the high just uh, oh, to see. It. To see I'm if. sure it's out there. I'm sure it's out there. Yeah, well, I get surprised by some things that aren't out there. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. you know, you'd think, you'd, you'd think you'd think something more yep. Now, now, paycheck is available uh, for free uh, with a Hulu subscription, and almost all of the other uh, subscription services have it for like three dollars. So it's it's actually relatively 
inexpensive if you want to rent it. But those of you that don't go to the high seas. <laughs> hmm. Oh, John, oh, John, a John Woo film. Have you not seen this movie? I have never seen this movie. Oh, you're going to like it. Never, you I've are never going seen to it. like it. Never seen it. Never heard it. I like some of the it, people. I like cast. It's it's cast. one of those it's one of those kinds of films where there's a complicated you know um, time travely timey wimey element to it, but they take the time to make sure it's all integral, all the interweaving things work, and you can tie all the strings back, and they do a really good job with it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So next week, uh, April fourth. Yep. It'll be paycheck. Yep. From two thousand and three, a John directed by John Woo, starring Ben Affleck. Yep. Yeah, definitely, this will definitely be a new one for me. <laughs> no, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you'll, you'll you'll really enjoy it. And it's up to you if you want to watch it in advance, so that's really a rewatch, or if you want to watch it for the first time with us next week. I actually think it's sometimes it's better when I watch it first. I, yeah. I, I think I get a better, I get a better, uh, for me, I can react better to it for some reason. So, yeah. And, and we can, we can, hear can, your I, initial I, reaction, yeah. But. yeah, the initial and surprise and, uh, and all stuff like that. Yeah. I think that, I think that would be, I think that would be fun. So yeah, next week paycheck. Um, after that, uh, I, yeah, Oh, yeah, we'll see. Um, How close is that getting to, uh, to Easter then? Because are you going to want to do know, something special around it? the Easter weekend? That's what I was just about to look up. Oh, oh I didn't know about that. What? Is, yeah, when is Easter this year? Uh, it's in April. See, I'm, I'm just looking at the computer. What? Yeah, I, I, I'm just That's looking at my Easter. normal. Date. Easter is on Sunday, April twelfth, twenty twenty. Sunday, April twelfth. There we go. Thank you, Alexa. Okay, April twelfth. So yeah, that'll be that's that is the weekend after that. That's my weekend. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I always watch Passion of the Christ. <laughs> Ooh, that'd that be a rough be, one to go through. That would be an intense one, but you know. That, that is oh, a acronym. you know, I know what about oh wait a minute well, Ten Commandments Ben Hur You want to oh do something God. really light? Give me just a second. I got an idea. Wait here there. Well, is. I don't know if I'd want to go. I really if you know if um they didn't. Do you know what's available year, for like free said, on YouTube? Awesome. Here comes Peter Cottontail. What? Oh the Rankin God. and Bass. Oh. Really? <laughs> Really? Really? Wait, I'll, you know what? I'll have to look at it. Yeah. Let's keep it open. Let's not get crazy yet. Uh, yeah, take a so look at it. Like I said, it's available Easter for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got uh, the possibility of Easter. we got Passover yeah. happening because uh, it's the same weekend. Um, we could. We could. If, he, if like he's that. interested, we could see that weekend to... Uh, the Catholic Bible geek, if he wants to do something like that for Easter, that's true. And then that's I would take, and then I could take the week after that, and then we'd sync up again with the, fo yep. the following week after that. Um, FYI, you know you're crooked, right? I do. Let me see. Yeah. Half of you. Yeah. I. Okay. I, okay. Just well, look. also because I, I, I'm, I'm here. Here's how we. There we go. There, that's better. You're off. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm watching myself on YouTube, so it's there's a delay, and every time I think I've moved oh. myself into the right position, I move myself into the, the wrong position. So, yeah. Agent, Bo Agent Boomer has suggested Night of the Lepus, Killer Killer Bunny, oh, Killer Bunny you know Rabbits. That was that was the uh, Grail. That was one of uh, Nanette's suggestions, and I said we got to start doing more movies that Nanette wants to see. So yes, Night of the Lepus is definitely one that we're planning on. We're also going to get her uh, spaghetti westerns in there too at some point coming up. But yep, yeah, Night of the Lepus is definitely going to happen. Uh, 
and we definitely have to do Blues Brothers. Brothers, no doubt about that. And Midnight and and Midnight Man. And this is does uh that's, that's another personal one fave and it's, yeah. it's one of those films that uh, it's one of those films that i not a lot of people that i know know that uh, it'll be cool to watch that yeah. with someone i know it's, yeah. it's been a while to watch that one too i have to pull that out yeah um we'll figure something out something easter oriented i've got uh i got a couple weeks to think about it so yep but so yeah next week paycheck Sound, sounds good you know let's yeah, let's go to that. But uh, I'll definitely, I'll definitely find something to uh, to watch. Like I said, Ben Hur would be cool, but man, for like a free film, that'd be a task. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could start. Early. I, I, start I was like gonna say, I, yeah, I was gonna say we'd want to start it a little early. That might be the way to go. Gosh, I haven't seen Ben Hur since I was a kid. I, I've never seen. Oh, I love Ben Hur. Really? Ben Hur is one of those films. <gasps> You've never seen Ben Hur? Oh my yeah, god! Know. Yeah, Ben Hur is. You know, I mean, it was it was the most decorated film, uh, most decorated film of the Oscars until Return of the King came along and tied it. Wow! Which is shocking to say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it won everything. I mean, you know, Heston won for actor. It won for film. Uh, everybody won. Yeah, you know, everybody in there won an award. Did Tony it Curtis seemed. get supporting uh, actor. No, that's Spartacus. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I do confuse the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it did win supporting actor for um, oh, what was his name? Was it Griffith? So, can't think of his name, but he played he played the Sheik that uh, supplied him with the horses that he raced with. Yeah, the, you're taxing my memory because it does that. That is a fuzzy memory for me. Hugh 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 Griffith is his name. Now I just remembered. He played uh, he played the Sheik and uh, who uh, who owned the four horses that uh, Ben Hur would race against Masala. You know, the more I think about it, the more I'm liking the, the idea of doing a Ben Hur real. <laughs> it's the thought. Uh, would people would people be up for a a three and a half hour movie like that? I'm just curious, you know. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll run a poll uh, or something on Twitter just to kind of get an idea. Be cool. Yeah, we'd have to start it way but, earlier. Yeah, I I would say like maybe ten, and yeah. it would it would we it would take us to to about eleven you know eleven thirty eleven twelve thirty. Let me see how. Let me see how long it is. Uh, uh, let me open my rewatch file. I, it should be uh, da, 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 movie phase one. I've got, I've got. Well, I just uh, let me see. It is three hours forty two minutes. So wow. yeah, it's 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 up there. It's close to it's close to four hours. Um, so yeah, um, I'll keep it in mind, but I may may have to find something else. But we'll okay. like I said, maybe I'll put a put a thing on Twitter, and we'll make it a big huge deal. Start at eight, uh, my time, seven your time. Would that be too early for you guys? No, I don't think so. Okay. A, so wait a minute. It would be a Saturday. We may still we may still be in lockdown, and you know. So today's the twenty eighth, right? We just watched Flash Gordon. Uh, Next week is the fourth with paycheck. Right. Then it's and then your the week. next weekend. With, oh, with that's where watch. I got off. That's where I got off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then the eighteenth. Then the eighteenth would have normally been you. Okay. And then the twenty fifth, but it, but no, it's fine. Yeah, it's. Do you I'm, mind then I'm, just taking those two weeks in a row? I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. Cool. I mean, cool. I, I technically, I technically would do every week if I had the uh, streaming power, uh, the uh, you know the streamyard time to do it. But right. Uh, but yeah, I can I, I can always find a fun, fun film, new or classic, or just. Some or dumb fun for it. They may break it in half, half one week, half the other week. 
Well, there's that option too. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't like watching films like that. I like yeah. watching. If I watch a film, I like watching the whole bloody thing. Yeah, I get um, that too. Yeah, I mean, I maybe like 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 watch part of it one night and the other the next night, but a week apart that would be, I think, it's just a bit much. And you know what? Actually, you know, going Good Friday to Holy Saturday that would actually not be a bad way to go. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I mean, I'll do it. We'll see what happens. Yep. Um, yeah. Ben. Yeah. Ben Hur. Man, it's a long film to be doing. If we if we did it, or I could do it. And people could just like duck in and out as much as, as they want. You know? Oh, that is true. Yeah, yeah I could. You know, because I know I could do the whole. I could do the whole thing. I could because I'm I'm used to watching a long film like that anyway. But. uh It'd be, it'd be uh it'd be going for me but you know that's all in the head let's uh let's wrap it up here tonight i'm glad everybody who was here with us i hope you had a good time i know i definitely did i have a good time every time i watch flash gordon um sad sad that we've lost ming but definitely he's he got a great legacy uh left behind and uh you know, sad. Sadly, if when we when we lose Brian Blessed, if we if we lose Brian Blessed, may have to rewatch it again. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a couple films that do Henry the Fifth. That's a good one for Brian Blessed too. Mm. He's done he's done some does great Shakespeare stuff with uh, um, what's his face. Uh, uh, the, the guy directs. He directs more than he acts now. Oh. Um, uh, Oh, I know who you mean. Yeah. Yeah. He, he directed Thor, <laughs> the first Thor movie. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of his name, though. You're right. He he, he does a lot of Kenneth, Kenneth, Bra Kenneth Bradler. Yeah. I, I just couldn't get my, my head around it. It's yeah. late. But uh, I thank everyone for joining us. I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you guys are staying safe. I um, hope you guys are staying, staying healthy. Uh, find some fun entertainment to do just like the rest of us are doing uh thank you guys again for joining us like i said join us again next week on troy pacelli's channel for paycheck yep. directed by john Wu, starring um ben affleck, ben affleck and uh so, sounds like a good movie so we'll check it out then yep. uh night everyone have a good one dive <laughs> Ah! <laughs>